Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the C Kappa Season 4 Playoffs. We are here with our second to last series of the entire tournament. It's our third place decided between High Ground and Execration here as we jump into a best of three series. Thank you so much for joining us here on Moonduck TV. It's always a pleasure to cast you guys for C Kappa. And guess what? We also have Trent Pax along the ride. Trent, how the hell are you today? You're muted. Oh, okay, good. You're not muted anymore. I got really scared there for a moment. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Ah! I'm doing great, man. How, how's your morning? Good. I slept last night. It was really good. Feel refreshed. Oh, Seven man. hours was great. You're up at the crack then. Uh, even before the crack, you could say. That's true. Yes. <clears throat> You'll be witnessing the dawn during our glorious sea dota. I would if we had windows down here that, you know, actually went to the outside world instead <laughs> true, of true, underground. True. So. Yeah, they just spawn spiders or something. Yeah, as there's... You can tell. I only saw one their today. only purpose. I only saw one spider, and it was really small today, so I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling like I have right, a bit right. of better luck than, than usual. Um, <laughs> for those of you guys that don't know, currently in the basement of the Moonduck house, and uh, the windows that go out don't go outside. They go to this little hole in the ground. So you actually, like, the sun barely comes in because it's covered pretty by Pretty much something. the best way to put it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're, we're, we're, we're just in a cave. It's pretty dank. It literally. is a very dank basement <laughs> indeed. Um, but we're jumping into a trend. Uh, we saw Excretion yesterday, a team that looked really good a couple days ago, and today, uh, or rather yesterday, they didn't look that great. Uh, or or perhaps um, uh, Warriors giving you just looked really good. And High Ground, of course, they had a pretty close series two days ago against um, Happy Feet. So I think yeah. uh, High Ground may be the favorite team of Trent. What do you think? Uh, yeah, pretty even overall, I would say, but, uh, I could see giving them a little bit of an edge. Uh, I'm not, uh, really thinking one team more so than the other, but, uh, in terms of like players, perhaps DDZ has been the one most impressed me lately. Like James has had some good moments, but, but, uh, DDZ, I mean, you know, typical stuff from him, right? Yeah. So. He's quite the player. The rest of his team, like we saw him TRX's axe the other day, which was really good. Felix had a great CM game, a great Rubik game in that series as well. They couldn't quite. You know, win with it, but <clears throat> they're going to get him back the the Rubik this game. I, I imagine Felix will play the Rubik, and the Warlock is going to be picked up as well for Mozen as he's played that pretty often, uh, often in that hard five, almost six position role. So that's going to be our first opening for high ground for Abaddon, uh, or rather for Execration Abaddon and Slaughter is the choice. And what bands do we have? Monkey King is gone. Um, let me tell you, Trevor, there's really a lack of IO bands in the SEA region. It just doesn't happen ever. Yeah, it's really not a hero that too many of the teams play. That often, um, like Execrational banned it sometimes against like Warriors Gaming Unity or something. I think that was our last um, mm -hmm. game. It did get banned, but mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much it. Like, it's uh, not a very common guy. Uh, now this guy though, I gotta tell you guys, if you want your compendium shit for Kiev, because I, I haven't seen anyone else say this, so I'll just throw my two cents in. I think Abaddon's gonna be the most banned hero at the major. I'd be very surprised if he was not. I think this hero is extremely strong. And I think all of those teams that are going to the major, a hell of a lot of them play very good at Baddens. I'm not expecting him to get through very often. So, uh, we'll have to see. I think this is one of the best combinations as well. You really want some team fight and some initiation whenever you pick a Badden because he's taking your offlane role most of the time, which means that uh, he, you know, he's not a very good initiator. He, he does a lot of other things amazingly well, but mm -hmm. you need that Earth Spirit or that Slardar with him to really enable him. So this is uh, some very good stuff. Man, Trent packs with the spicy hot takes uh, early in the morning today. I tell you, giving you all that information. Woo! I, I'm, I'm in, boys. And Rubik's gonna be the most picked, I think. Yeah, that 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 does not surprise me. I mean, you know, I was just, no. I, I I could see the Abaddon. It's not like again, I don't know enough to dispute you. It sounds good from hearing it from you. Uh, but Rubik is something that I can get behind in terms of most picked because he's already one of the most picked heroes in Dota two as of right now. Yeah. Um, there are certain teams that will, if you're playing against certain teams, you will ban him, such as potentially an OG draft. Although there's a lot of stuff yeah, like that play against OG. Phase Rubik. Exactly. Um, so there are some teams that will ban him, but I do think for the majority of the teams, there's going to be a lot of Rubik's that are picked. So uh, definitely check that out. Put that shit in your compendium. Um, but we'll see about that, and I'm, I'm interested. But anyways, moving on, we have some other bans out. MTRX's axe has been banned by Execration. They don't want to give that away. Mm -hmm. They say that's too much. Uh, Lance Heroes, there's plenty left for high ground. And then the DDZ Heroes are what I'm interested in. They ban out the Tinker, so he won't be picking that for himself. The Invoker is still available if they want to go for it. Uh, against the Madden Slaughter, I actually think that's kind of okay. Uh, there's some other important heroes, though, and now X Christian has the next pick, Trent. Yeah, I really like this um, Spectre ban, too, because the the idea of that hero being that, like, your, your team's somewhere else on the map, and you're just farming somewhere that's, like, relatively safe. 
uh, and they're just applying so much pressure that uh, it forces the enemy team to deal with like your four man unit and then Spectre can just join at any time. So it's like there's five people approaching your towers, but Spectre is just getting all this extra farm um, while you're doing that. And when you have an Abad and a Slarda, that's already a very good start to a strong four man lineup. And now they bring in this Juggernaut. So this could theoretically be the mid and be part of that four-man lineup using the Healing War to pressure and push. But honestly, Jug can do a lot of the same stuff the Spectre can. Mm -hmm. um, maybe he can't join the fight quite as fast, but he's going to have spin TP. So uh, probably going to try and find some way to deal with that. However, you've picked up both of your supports. And uh, unless you're going to golem him every time, which seems like a terrible idea. If he's just split pushing and you're trying to deal with an Abad and rushing your towers. They uh, could run into trouble dealing with his, uh, his ratting. Well, they're going to counter it by having a good lane push rate in their own right with the Luna. Uh, but they use all of their reserve oh time. God. I mean, they the got memes, very close dude. to zero seconds. It's the CM, Jug, Slardar combination. What a oh. hero combo. Dude, these four heroes are just... Like, like look at this. What are you going to do? They have so much sustain. They have healing ward. They have a Fodic shield in the bat. And all this mana aura. from the Crystal Maiden. Yeah. Oh. Mm. It's great. It is fantastic. Um, now, they do need their mid-hero. And while there is a Jug, I doubt... Very much there will be a mag. It's always something to keep in the back of your mind. But that is a strictly oh. offlane pick for now. Uh, Shadow Fiend for high ground. So they have, again, it's a very good lane push. A lot of good right-click damage. But uh, I was actually just going through Excreations list to see if they played Shadow Fiend. <laughs> so I was like, man, this seems like if they just picked a Shadow Fiend and he bought a BKB, they would just like walk into this line. Do you think that's why high ground dead. took it? Do you think they just were like, let's not let Excreation uh, have this? I think it's just a, a strong hero for them, too. I mean, DDZ can be ownage. Um, so potentially they were just like, all right, well, we, we kind of want this guy and we don't have to ban him. And, uh, I guess they could just pick them next two, but either way, uh, clockwork ban. Okay. Oh, that hero is coming back, man. Let me tell you, no BYB clockwork this time around. Um, we've talked about it like every day. I feel like for the past couple of days, it's pretty good. Yeah. But, uh, he, they banned it for them. Like they banned it so not, not as not to give it to high ground because high ground still need their offlaner. Uh, which we'll see what that is going to be. We'll determine pretty soon. What other offlaners are available right now? Timber is okay. Um, there's only the root of CM to deal with. And as long as you're not rooted mid-chain, he can still move while rooted. It's not like Ember Spirit that got nerfed. Right. Um, and then I think Timber's pretty good with dealing with Abaddon. He also has some like somewhat good wave clear. The only problem is he doesn't take advantage of Presence of the Dark Lord or Lunar Blessing very much. Um, so... That could be something that they're considering. Could be thinking, like, hmm, do we have someone who, like, right-clicks a little bit better? But, uh, like, Mag is still in. But he also, like, Empower doesn't help Luna and Shadow Fiend that much. I kind of like Timber. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm all right with... Oh, God, they really got low there. They finally will pick Ooh. the Omni Knight. That is a pretty great pick against Jug in terms of having okay. Guardian Angel, at least until a Diffusal Blade comes out for the Juggernaut, so... Wow, you guys want to push? Okay. Good luck. <laughs> I think we will also push. I mean, it's, it's going to be a race here. Yeah. Ten seconds. I think, um, I don't know, man. Yeah, this is tough, actually. I do think that Five Shadow Fiend does a bit more damage earlier on. God damn it. Why is OBS disconnecting already? Dude, we dropped oh, 21 no. frames at a DCs. I don't understand why it does this. I like, mean, they're not going to hear when I snipe this ember. Uh, it depends on if it reconnects Damn you, OBS. Time. All right, it reconnected. You're good. So call it. All right. Oh, I think, well, I'm just, uh, let me think here. I think Ember is actually pretty good. The only problem is he doesn't buy Diffusal Blade. Um, what's their wave clear situation like? Pretty oh, weak. Man, you know Maybe they it, need like Alina. You know what it is, Trent? What is it? I think we have an automatic Lena. disconnect I thing. Alina. I don't know. The wave clear was too weak. Sorry. They were too I, concerned. I'm trying to figure Ember this out. Get behind? Trying to figure this out. It really should delay the retry. Oh, no. It shouldn't delay the retry at all. It should automatically reconnect in one second. Boom. Maximum retries, 100. Apply. Oh, why is the stream off right now, though? Uh, because the, I think it does. The, the delay is weird. I don't know. It's strange. It'll fix oh. itself in a moment. I hope. Yeah, I think whenever it disconnects, it disconnects like from that moment on. It doesn't include the delay. So they're going to miss five minutes of action despite us disconnecting once. Sick. Sick stuff. I actually have to figure out why this is doing this. Ten seconds remaining. Oh, I should probably... All right, well, we're getting into it. Uh, I probably shouldn't look this up now, but it's bothered me so much um, that uh, it, it is a big issue. Anyway... 
High ground versus execration, game number one now getting underway as we will jump into the draft momentarily. We've talked about pushing, pretty close game so far in terms of the draft, at the very least. Love the Omni at last pick. Lena coming out, though, for execration as their mid-hero. Uh, I think high ground looked better than execration the other day, Trent. I think it's hard to say that, but I do think that uh, it, it did look better. Or they did look better, I should say. Uh, I don't know if you agree, but I think execration eh. looked really yeah. not great yesterday. I'll say that much. Yeah, they had some issues. I can, I can get down with that. Well, yeah. let's see if they can turn it around here, buddy. That's a possibility. And we will jump oh, into game looks like one. the stream's alive again. Hey! Yay. All right. And yeah, you're right. It's all still delayed and everything. It's all good. All yeah, it, it turns off for half a second, and then it eventually works itself out. It's weird. It's a very weird situation, but... Uh, we should be good now, folks. Again, sorry about that. It happens like once every day. That at least we got it out of the way early. <laughs> um, I'll, we'll work on fixing it. I, I honestly don't know why it happens. I guess there are like thirty thousand other computers on uh, and uh, and everything in this in this house. So it's something to keep in mind. So anyway. uh, in terms of like how we ended up here, like the Lena again, because uh, uh, we are kind of saying like Ember seems kind of good. Um, just because this idea of, like, if they end up split pushing on high ground, then your Ember can be not there. You do have a strong four-man and would operate a lot like a Spectre. Uh, and then he would just be doing it from the mid lane rather than the safe lane. But uh, if they do fall behind and you have an Ember like that, you're you're in big trouble, more than likely. They're just going to keep pressuring and pressuring. And uh, you need someone with this, like, high wave clear and damage uh, like this Lena's going to have. She can also try and assassinate the Omni Knight when she goes to, like, a Shadow Blade build and stuff. So... Ooh. This is, uh, I would say, a, a pretty nice draft coming from the Radiant, but likewise from the Dire. Um, I feel more confident and comfortable with the Radiant one just because it's a lot of meta heroes. It's a lot of very strong ones right now, whereas like some of these heroes like Luna and Omni Knight aren't considered toppest of tier right now. But, no, definitely not. Um, but like, it, this is still a very good lineup on the Dire. They also have equal auras. They can also get ahead. Uh, so a lot of this is probably going to come down to the advantages that we get in the laning so phase. So it's a snowball game is what you're telling me, essentially. Yeah. Who, and, who snowballs and better? Roche. Okay. That's fair. Uh, it always is around Roche, though, isn't it? Isn't it always like a Roche, a Roche type? I guess there are certain drafts where we're just like, we don't care about Roche. But yeah, there's seems... some, but this is pretty Roche um, for both teams. <laughs> I think the uh, the Dire side snowball a little bit weaker just because they rely on the Golem. Super long cooldown. No cooldowns for the Radiant besides like Omni Slash, but it's not that important. I feel like it's easier, as mentioned, because of the Golem. I feel like just picks are easier for, for Execration overall. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Mosin is in. He went in deep. I don't know why he went up there. That was a little weird. Meanwhile, the Radiant to invade, and uh, they will take the battery room for themselves. James does get his own as well. Felix comes through too, but he's alone as well. So it actually is going to be three runes for execration. So off to a fast start already. All right, if we're talking about Snowball, man, that's one way to do it. Get, get three battery runes. Boom. Yeah, You're there in. you go. Now we just need to see if uh, Felix can manage to grab the courier, but... Seem like that'll be the case. Yeah, He's already be, heading back up top. That's going to be difficult. We'll keep an eye on him, though. But uh, the way the lanes are being shaped up, my friend, it looks to be standard stuff for pretty much both teams. I mean, Kimmy Willow is starting out mid, but whatever. Not a big deal there. And then it's a defensive try lane top for, for high ground. Uh, against this Batten is pretty tough. They already have to use Shadow Ward defensively on Mosin. BYB telekinesis up. They have Lunar Blessing. It's a lot of damage to see, but Fairy yeah. Fire, he has a salve. It won't matter. Felix will secure First Blood. So already kind of shutting this Abaddon down early on in this game. Uh, it's still very yeah. early, but it is First Blood. And this is what I wanted to bring about the Luna, too, is because we saw them ban out the Ursa and the Axe, and those are two heroes that you can put the Ursa in a 1v1, and he'd do well against the Abaddon. Uh, and then, I'm oh, sorry, the uh, the axe in a one v one. I mean, you probably could with the Ursa too. Let's be honest. But yeah. basically, and in terms of safe laners, Ursa is the best one at zoning out uh, any sort of an off laner. So if you don't have Monkey King to zone out a bad, then uh, you need uh, these core heroes to do it. And with both of those heroes gone, the Luna is actually a pretty nice option. Um, yeah. In a trial lane situation, as he said, she adds a lot of damage. Warlock is pretty good against the too, because he just keeps putting the stupid shadow word on you, and he brings some clarities and. Uh, he's very obnoxious, so it's a smart draft uh, to deal with this Abaddon here from the Radiant, and uh, BYB maybe not sure exactly how well his lane was going to go, just because, you know, he's got a stout shield, he's thinking about his poor man's shield, but no Quelling Blade quite yet. Maybe he can get to, that, get to that point. Felix actually thought he was jungling, but BYB's just standing and making sure nobody comes up and takes his two-minute room. We've often seen this where, like, the Abaddon will be here jungling, and then the Rubik's here, and just gets ready to come in and uh, steal your rune. He's going to steal it anyways. It That's actually insane. Yeah. He just steals it anyway. Oh, he doesn't even need the Telekinesis. That's no, nice. he has a TP scroll too, and BYB really can't do anything about it. Uh, they're not going to rotate the oh, Lena the in. Oh, Courier. Can you imagine if this worked? I don't That'd think... Funny. There's no way. Yeah, but Felix no. has to go back to the app strike. He's trying to juke a jive 
like an NFL tailback, and uh, right now it's working out pretty well. Yeah, those brown boots. He's out of there. Yeah, he's pretty speedy. Okay, well, um, small little things adding up here potentially for high ground. They still have good lanes coming out for uh, both Jug and Lena mid. It's pretty even, though. Uh, the Abaddon is getting more farm than, or rather, the uh, Omnidote is getting more farm for the, than the Abaddon is, so there is something to, to keep in mind there. Not much, but a little bit. Um, I don't know. Early game-wise, we'll see what happens. Kimmy Well looking to sprint on to Felix. He's trading an auto-attack or two right now, and the sprint is gone. It's on level one. The duration is not really that long. and A lot of rotations from some of these supports early in the game, friend. Yeah, and I will say there's also some... Like gaps in the dire draft, which I don't really see in the radiant one. Um, initiation, probably the biggest one. They have like no initiating heroes on dire, so they have golem, uh, and they have omni just walking into you, trying to like beta fight, and that's uh, that's their initiation. Like maybe there's gonna be the shadow blade shadow fiend, but that's yeah. not really a stun or anything, right? No. He just hopes he can just kill someone. Uh, whereas on the radiant side, you can of course build up into this uh, slider. He's gonna have his blink dagger. It's gonna be a very important item too kind of change the tone of this game and give them a little bit of an edge over their opponents. It's an important point. As you mentioned, the Shadow Blade, pretty, I don't know, maybe likely for DDZ. He might also get a Blink Dagger. Oh, However, nice Slithering Crush, they will break it. LSA comes out. Telekinesis there. One more auto attack. Is it going to be a time? Kimmy will get it. Guardian Sprint, very good for keeping up with that Shadow Fiend. Despite the fact that Telekinesis stun was really good, uh, it's not going to be enough to, to save. Dude, poor, poor Felix. Fiend. He was camping. He knew this was coming. And he's sitting right here, and the Courier comes, and he moves over to get the Courier quicker. And that way, the smoke gets to here before it pops on the Slardar, so he can't get the Telekinesis, runs into Shadow Fiend, gets the kill. That's kind of insane, actually. Yeah, that's so. That's just straight up unlucky. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. There's nothing you could do about that. <laughs> I mean, maybe you can argue he should have ended in a better position, but it's not really his fault. Um, anyways, we'll see the Lena rotate to the Bounty Rune. She needs some sort of rune in order to continue to get this mana regen going. What does the CM have? A little too Arcan or so Maybe not. Maybe she doesn't really need the bottle, considering how fast her mana is regening right now. Yeah. Um, the dream, dude. It's pretty great. Three set, three, uh, three mana a second is pretty nice. When well, you don't have that much mana to begin with. I mean, she does have like five mana, so it's pretty, pretty good. Raise is coming out. Telekinesis is going to be there in time. Triple raise for DDZ. Secures the kill. Felix is like, fine. You got our Shadow Fiend, but I'm rotating in and we're getting this damn kill one way or another. And oh, he gets nice. the taunt. Man, Winter G is owning this pull as Crystal Maiden right now. That was a single pull, and he got two creeps denied, and all the last hits. Oh. Feels good. Well, it is pushing out, though. I don't know if they wanted to do this. Uh, then I, I think Jug should be able to control it at this point. Phase boost. So. Yeah, he should be able to deny it up. Double Winter range G's creeps, though. Yeah, and Winter G's going, yeah. It is double range creep, so it will push out at least a little bit, but keep your eyes peeled on it. MTRX, how much farm does he have? 17 last hits for this Omni at level 4. What does he have bad oh, have? Oh, and, and Omni blocked this. I didn't realize he just walked over and blocked this. That was a smart play. Pretty sick. Going to get chased down. Low on mana. He's already used purification. He does have the Repel. So the Crush comes out. Of course, it was blind. So TRX is going to get caught. Repel will come through finally. But is it enough damage? They need one or two more auto attacks potentially per person. So there's going to be the uh, usage of that blade here. They get the kill easily with it as the Crush comes out perfectly. No. Winergy dies as DDZ rotates in and finds himself a double raise. Now Lance TP's in as well. Lucid B, but they have any way to lock this down. Keep going to walk right into Felix, and that's how they'll get this kill. One more auto attack, and Lance will secure it. So he does TP down. He gets himself a kill, but it's only one. It's on the slaughter. Still, it's a two-for-one trade. Omni Knight says, okay, I'll gladly give my life for Lance to get more farm. Yeah, that's a pretty cool rotation, too, where, like, this Luna comes in, then she sits. Oh, she's not actually going to chill mid. I thought maybe no. she'd farm there for a bit while Shao can clean this up. But they're going to do the rotation back again. Omni's like, nope, this back. is mine. I think I need Arcanes. You, <laughs> whatever. You go farm top. Warlock did get a little bit of experience up here, though. But yeah, Luna's back. She's nice and speedy, so it's fine. Warlock's going to go steal a bounty. She just, like, traversed the map in this span of 30 seconds. It's pretty insane. Lucid Beam to break the Aphotic Shield. BYB does not have level 6, and he's not very... He's a little close, I guess. He's almost level 5, but... Uh... That is crazy that she has brown boots, and she moves at 380. Oh, BYB. A hero. Get out. You got a TP scroll. Time to use it. Felix is like, I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. Telkinesis is not in time. Actually got the attack animation off, but no vision and a perfect TP from BYB. If he gets caught there, that's a dead hero for sure. Not Another the chance to get himself to level 6 then. Alright. What are we looking at here? Top net worth is Shadow Feet, interestingly enough. So some of those rotations really working out well for him. Uh, with level 4 raise, very easy to take some camps along with just the creep wave being pushed out pretty consistently. 30 Necromastery stacks, drops himself a ward. I don't think he saw Kimmy well. Uh, that ping actually no, did come I out from him. the Rubik. Yeah, they definitely did see him, and now he sees him especially. 
Sees him right in the tree line, so DDZ kind of baiting this. There isn't anybody there to help out. They're dealing with top lane for now. BYB going to get Lucid oh, Beam. Eclipse is going to go. Uh-oh. Can they get this? BYB, they need one more Lucid Beam or a couple of auto attacks. Lance should get it done. We'll Mid take lane. a lot of damage. He's got stick charges and cells. Mid lane, though, they're turning around. Looking for Kimmy Will as well as James, both solo. Laguna Blade gets the kill onto DDZ. Was not expecting that Laguna to come out, and DDZ sticks around for way too long. So it's a one-for-one -one trade, but a better trade mid than it is that top lane coming out for high ground. Yeah, Felix, they, they brought the Rubicon under the tower at the perfect time as they were both diving in and saved the Shadow Fiend, but then, yeah, went back for the uh, the re-goose, got punished with the as Laguna. Yes. That was a pretty sick play, though. James, like, so low, just turns around, just bam. <laughs> He's just, just like, got him. Got him. You weren't expecting it. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there, but it uh, worked out pretty well. Anyway, Arcane Rune, Kimiel's going to snag that up or at least save it for somebody. He has to get it himself now. Excellent. Arcade rune, slaughter, the perfect, the perfect rune. And he stole their bounty rune too, so well on his way towards his blink dagger. He's Damn, actually dude. very farmed. Eight minutes in. Yeah, he's 50 gold. That's pretty good, yeah. Tranquils. Mm. By the way, 5.6 second cooldown versus the rune crush with Arcane Rune is actually pretty good. It sprints like 12, which is also. But does not he bad. not have tranquils? I could have swore he He does. He put, him, he put him down. They're right here. Oh, okay. I can't even see them. Yeah, he's they're underneath the alpha wolf. Or rather the uh, whatever these wolves are. Oh, Giant wolf. Okay. Yep. Ooh, my brain. My poor brain. You just got really scared for a moment, I know. I got debated. You did. Dumbass. Lucy Beam <laughs> comes out, BYB, top lane. Oh, They're running God, at him. BYB. They missed the fatal bonds, by the way. Uh, and now they need to leave. So they crush on the Lance. The Shadow Word is up. They have the Crystal Nova, the Frostbite as well. And uh oh. Lance, you are in trouble, my friend. He does get the kill before he goes down, but James does get off the Laguna Blade and it gets himself a double kill. So that's a bit of a debated play. That was. Ooh. I don't know about that. I do That's not know about that. killing spree. The mid Lena. Jesus, man. I don't know what happened there. They're going to smoke I up mean, too. You see this Abad and he's level 5. You're like, wow, this will be the last time we can kill this hero, guys. Let's do it. Yeah. I, I can understand the uh, the temptation. It's like, uh, yeah. I don't know. DDZ's about to die too. Great smoke. Chris Nova, Slytherin Crush. LSA, Dragon Slave, Auto Attacks, dead. So they go through the flow chart one by one and... Oh god, there was a fucking holy shit. There's a um a thread on my shirt that was out there and I thought it was a spider and I freaked out for half a second. Damn, dude. That scared the hell out of me. I hate bugs. It's a hard Jesus. knock life. It is, man. Fuck. Anyway, sorry. My apologies. It's okay. We uh we have level four arcane or no points in the ulti yet from Winter G. He's not feeling it. Oh god, can they get this kill? Spin, healing ward too? Oh man, that's just enough damage from Lance to secure it. It's very close for him to get out there with that blade fear, but could not make it away in time. We'll see if they can maybe turn this into a tower as well. By the way, no towers have been taken yet, so the snowball is not really quite online for either team, but just something to keep in mind. We'll wait and see if that's gonna be the case. They don't have level six from Rosen yet. He's getting there. He's trying to get some experience top lane, and he probably should get six very soon. Uh, Looks like they're um, thinking about mid next for the Radiant in terms of those towers, though. Like, coming in, putting that uh, ward behind the tower. That should be the place where we'll find that pressure. But this Omni is level 7, so one of the scarier points of the game for him. Level 4 Purification. He can, uh, like, that turnaround of these team fights. You think about how good that spell is all game. This is 10 and a half minutes in. Like, it's, uh, that's a lot of friggin' damage, man. 300 pure damage. It's pretty insane, yeah. That's like half of these heroes' HPs. Um, that, that's like half of it. Or like a third of Lena's HP, for example. It's crazy. It's not fun. Uh, no. We'll see if uh, they can get online with some of these purifications. He's rotating down towards bottom. Mid lane, James looking for some damage out of DZ. He doesn't seem too concerned. And as we had previously mentioned, uh, High Ground needs some initiation, and it will be a Shadow Blade for, for DDZ, which is not surprising. It's a good item even when you don't need initiation. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he goes for it is not shocking. Yeah, I can run into some issues. Like, uh, you lose a little bit of the value just because you pretty much guarantee they're going to have chase on you because of the Slayer Dire. But again, it's mostly the initiation. All right, they've got Golem. Ozen is canceling the animations. And he Get is being... back. This is my tower. <laughs> some Gandalf shit. You shall not pass type <laughs> stuff going on. Wow, that would be an excellent mod if it changes to that. Uh, there's a good chance that somebody makes it. Uh, anyways, tier one tower will be taken, but they are setting for a killed mid. Kimmy all coming in, 1600 oh, gold, nice so scan. he's getting close to his blank dagger. And yes, perfect skin. DDZ is gonna stay safe. They will secure the tier one tower. And uh oh, I think you need to back now if you are mighty savior James and Kimmy. However, DDZ maybe walking a bit too far forward. 
LSA, Laguna Blade is there, and that is a dead hero. TP's coming in a bit too late. The scan is going to connect, but here comes Lance. The Eclipse is up, but he doesn't quite have the vision. Oh, no. So unfortunately, Disaster. it does not work out. They do have the Golem if they want to use it. Good LSA onto one. Lucid Beam to come out as well. Can they chase him down? Golem drop. They will get a kill, by the way, on the Omni Knight, but it is a Golem to get the kill on the Lina. So use just for a solo pickup. And uh, it's a two-for-one trade because of it, too, as well as they, they lost the Omni Knight who was rotating in earlier. Telekinesis will come out. Uh, they do not have any further lockdown. Lance's Lucent Beam is really not that much. So this is the whole lack of initiation kind of demonstrated. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, uh... Yeah, that was kind of brutal. Oh, that rotation. Hey, got ulti. Uh, just in the tower. edge. Yeah, that actually kills the creep wave, too. And it's going to kill the second creep wave. Maybe. Yeah, Felix is like, God, that's tempting. He thought about <laughs> just stealing it. level six. And how can I get in there? They can't. They frostbite down the golem. Top lane, some action oh, breaking like out. DDZ Ross. getting chased down. There was a Bob Ross. Yes, Blade Fury comes out. BYB. Nice steal from Felix, though. It is Blade Fury. But uh, that is going to be the borrow time. He has a little bit of mana left. He has some mangoes to work with as well. And he's just going to try to get out and TP away with his mango here momentarily. Rays to come through. They need to tell Kinesis they do not have one. Fade Bolt. Lucid Beam will get the job done, though. I didn't think Lance was going to get there in time, but boy, does he. Um, and so Dive is punished here as High Ground will secure at least one kill. And all five rotate top lane. Now, I assume that was B uh, or uh, DDZ's branch. But why does he have another branch? This guy's a Bob Ross and Fiend or some shit. I don't know. Don't it's ask just me. like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to carry this thing with me. I got empty slots, need those stats. The value. All right, well. Fair enough. Oh, God. T1 Tower getting assaulted bottom lane. Oh, well, this looks like the exact style of Dota we were expecting for the yes. draft. <laughs> Took 14 minutes, but we got here, Trent. One team top, one team bottom. Trade T1 Towers. Sick. There is uh, one difference that... Uh, High ground do not have that uh, execration do. And that's the tier one tower has been taken middle. Uh, I guess you could say that the tier one tower top lane is still alive for high ground where it is not for execration, so there's that. But they're still pushing to the tier two tower. Now we're gonna see some TPs back. Telkinesis is going to go, but good counter initiation come out. Double races there, purification, repel just in time. The blade fury comes out, but now with three minutes stuck coming in, they have to use the GA. MTRX is trying to get out. The eclipse is there. BYB pops the bar time early. Winter G gets blown up by Lance, and now BYB might be on his own. Race is coming out, double raise, and a lucid beam gets Lance a double kill. James is solo. Great initiation onto three, but the race comes out from DDZ to cancel oh. out that Lena's effect. Ah, can you all, man? That sucks. You had everything, and just DDZ not getting crushed there means. It's not enough. He needed a four-man stun instead of a three-man stun, but you got to give him credit. And we'll back up now. Mighty Saber coming in. Southern Crush to come out. Mighty Saber has Omni, but it is level one. Moses is still going to live, but Blade Fury will come out. Golem drop down. Uh-oh, Mighty Savior. He might die to this auto attacks and will. Lucid Beam is going to be all five going down. The raise is not enough. as Kimmy Wall taking a lot of damage. And Mosin says, yes, I will take that trade. But coming in from the blinds, it's going to be BYB running in. He's nowhere to cancel these TPs. Lance will try to TP out momentarily. Kimmy will misses the Southern Crush. It's time to leave, my friend. Actually going to turn it around. Purification is there. No more borrowed time for six seconds. Requiem is getting channeled up. Won't be used. And Lance will hightail away along with MTRX. And it's just not enough damage for either team to bring down some of those heroes at the end of the fight. But high ground looked very, very good there, Trent. Yeah. Uh, I will say, though, Radiant did get the bottom tower. And they were able to hold top. So, I don't know. Kind of, <laughs> kind of one of those uh, those situations where you say, but at what cost? True, true. Um, I think I don't know. It was hard to tell the fight recap. It didn't look like it was that brutal overall, but that's probably just because the tower gold and stuff. But um, it will take like a 700 lead in terms of net worth and drop it down to uh, just a couple hundred of a lead over for the the dire side. So not too crazy. Yeah, still very early on here. Oh man. They have to, DDZ has to watch that, that double damage room get snagged up by James. It's never fun. And is he, nope, not up to level 15 yet, so his damage would be about where it is uh, with that. Well, I mean, it's double damage, so it actually is more, but. Yeah, that is one thing, the levels for sure, like winning a fight like that. I mean, you see the Shadow Fiend, it's level 14 in the moment here. Oh, he just got it. Wow, man, Ancients. So sick. They are something else. They really are. He's going Hurricane Pike next, as to be expected, so. Good right click for the Shadow Fiend. Lance is pushing mid. Does he have a Manta style? He does. And he's saving it too. He's not even like, let's keep using this and, and push. In fact, he's going to say, let's use it now to push into the tier two tower. He's walking very far forward. He's rather tanky. 
Um, but we'll see if they can find him and bring him down. On the other side, Kimmy Wall spotted out, but there is going to be that sentry ward. However, DDZ might be in trouble. Blade Fury to come out first. Moses doesn't have his ultimate. Meanwhile, LS and MTRX, Requiem getting channeled. Now the Eclipse going out from Lance. They will bring down Winter G. Lance taking a lot of damage. Thunder Crush comes out again. Somehow Lance is still alive. Laguna Blade doing a lot of work, but not nearly enough. Lucid Beam comes out. Kimmy Wall getting chased down, and they blow away Lance as BYB gets some nice hits. There's the Omni Slash. It is still of a one, and Mosin is still alive somehow. That Golem is up in 26 seconds, and they can't bring him down. MTRX taking a lot of damage from the spins. Here's going to be the Requiem coming out. It's going to hit perfectly, but Kimmy Wall will still take one down in the meantime. It's a triple kill for DDC. These raises are on point, and beautiful plays coming out from high ground there. It was looking really good, but the sustain is immaculate from high ground. Purification, <laughs> Repel, Shadow Word. Good luck killing any of these heroes. And man, they, they do get two, but it's just not enough. Damn, that was bold. Uh, the way they just stood their ground there and fought, I mean, that's what Shadow Fiend does best. That's what you think of this guy when you, you see him in the draft and what you want him to accomplish in a game. That is just ridiculous. Gets the ulti off, throws out the raises, as you're saying, on point from DDZ. Now he's level 15. He's got the 175 health. Gonna help him just tank up even a little bit more, take more advantage of this Warlock healing and Mosin just... Like, can you imagine if they get some sort of a sustained item? Right now, this is just the heals. If they were to get a mech finished up from this Omni Knight, God tier. How close are they? Oh, not very at all. He does have a Midas, though. So there's yeah, that. Yeah, he farms pretty fast right now. Yeah. But he did have to go back for that Midas. I don't know when he got it, but it feels like it's been a while. Uh, Mosin is uh, scouting things out. I think he drops a ward before leaving as he had an Indus rune. Courier is bringing an ultimate orb to Mighty Savior, which will make him tankier. Which he desperately needs. He finally gets up to level 2 Omni Slash. Might have had level 2 Omni Slash in that fight, I don't remember, but it looked like a level 1 Omni Slash, essentially. Yeah, I, I just, he is not doing as well as he could. I mean, look at the net worth difference between him and the Luna. It's not, not great. And Luna's yeah. now building into what seems to be a BKB. In fact, I think she has it. No, it's Dragonlance, just kidding. So Ogre Club thought BKB, and I was like, damn, that is fast. But no, it's Dragonlance instead, which is just as fine. <clears throat> yeah, so Hurricane Bike's Dragonlance. very handy still. Um, so we can get one of those later. Kind of funny we get these like saving mechanisms on our uh, our cores now just like when you're pushing high ground they're so good for bailing people out of those bad situations we always talk about how hard high ground seems to be right now it is difficult yes absolutely double hurricane pike on their team would be pretty useful they have a blink on rubik as well by the way so felix having another good rubik game um, and that's that's like the initiation that they you know it's it's still relatively weak but if he can steal a decent enough spell. Like LSA, for example, or Slytherin yeah. Crush for that matter. But LSA is perfect for this. Um, so, yeah, not bad. We'll see what he could do with it. Again, Hurricane Pike now coming out for the Shadow Feed, actually. I think it is, anyway. It is. It's full Hurricane Pike. We're going to head into Roche, uh, and this should yeah. go pretty quickly with Presence of the Dark Lord. Yep, no problem. They, uh, they must have some good vision here or something. I don't know. They, I suppose they have this one, so they could probably just throw up a scan in a minute here. Like, right up here and just be like, all right, are they coming in? Because I don't see any vision over here to let them know. It. Yeah. Oh, that's a Radiant Scan. Oh, it's not going to hit anyone. Even though there's people outside the pit. If they walked even a little bit. Oh! Oh, my God. Are you kidding? Oh, my God. They actually... It didn't matter because it was going to die anyways. But that's still. so funny, though. Yeah. I can't believe it didn't hit on a single person. DDC moved to the end there. I was sure it was going to go off, but it didn't, so... Unfortunate, that's what happens when you try to scan around Roche. I understand it was a little outside of Roche, but it doesn't always work every time just because of the positioning of certain heroes. Um, let's see. Execration are moving up and is smoke and are ready to go. They have Yule Scepter. This is like we Lino. already smoked, but we're just going to walk into this Roche team anyway. This is, this is probably a little bit DDZ of a DDZ is going to break this and Shadow Blades up. Yeah, and they're going to back now. They drop a sentry. They know DDZ is there. And they were trying to run. And uh, if they had any lockdown, this would be perfect. If they don't, oh, LSA comes Felix. out. And yeah, he's just too far. Like, just can't get there in time. So. They're so lucky that wasn't a total disaster. Yeah, true. Very true. So, five minutes now for the Sages for high ground. We'll see what they can get done with it. Again, both teams have very good push, very good tower hitters. But uh, we'll wait and see. By the way, did the Abaddon go back for the Radiance? He picked up... No, he's going full pipe early on here. So he did go for the Midas. didn't go for the Radiance, though. So he go full pipe. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. They they clearly need it during these engagements. They're uh -oh. very close to winning Ooh. them. Uh-oh. DDZ is in trouble. He's that's got no force. Ages. He's going to use the Hurricane Pike on himself, or rather on the Lena. And unfortunately, that is no Aegis, as you mentioned. 
Fade Bolt, James is going to get a fog kick up. Uh, Laguna Blade is stolen, which is nice, but that, that is a dead Shadow Fiend. That is one thing. He kind of stalls oh, whatever push was coming from high ground. That it went to a bad. That's so good for BYB because he has pipe and 800 gold. Wow, that kill was huge. Yeah. Yeah, that is awesome because now he honestly could still go Radiance. Like, it's 22 minutes in. You have a fully complete item and you have a Midas. I wouldn't be shocked to see him go for it. Um, he could also go to Fusil Blade. I think that would be kind of cool. On the event, just for against the Omni Knight. Do they yeah, have but a... I guess most of your team damage is Repel, and Jug's probably going to build one anyway, right? He is right? building yeah. one. He's in the process of taking that. Like, it doesn't really hurt to have more than one, but on your bad, and it's like, eh. Yeah. And they will try to trade tier two towers, will not be successful, so then we'll push at the wave. Uh, Scotty's very close to completion. I love this item choice for Luda, by the way. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, she's kind of just skipping out on those BKBs. Just like, I eh, think it's a really good way. Stuff that goes through, it's so. a really good way to slow down some of these heroes that are already pretty speedy. Telekinesis is going to come in. There's Laguna Blade, but a Phonic Shield blocks the majority of it. Uh, Borrowed Time is still there. Race comes out, and I think they have to back now. The no Telekinesis is for another 14 seconds. He's running in with his own Aphotic Shield. Glimmer Cape comes out. Felix, I think this is maybe a little too far forward for you, but he understands this. He'll back up finally. And that'll be that. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Camille getting that very deep ward here. Yeah, I was like, damn. He is nice. behind enemy lines right now. He in three seconds, so he should be able to be back. He's got a lot of initiation and mobility right now. I like what they're doing. James is just pushing bottom in. They're like, all right, well, you guys want to push the T2, that's fine, but we're going to threaten your 2 3 bottom lane, which already, by the way, has taken some damage. It's pretty important. There is actually no TP on Luna as well. Uh, not for a little while, just like 10 more seconds, seconds or yeah, so. Yeah, They'll take the tower down more than likely, uh, but they need to get back home. Like, dude, now. if James gets this tower, though, I mean, oh, he went for the minus thirty respawn. Wait, really? Oh, I mean, I can understand because the state of the game, but that'd be that tower, hundred percent. If he had plus fifty damage. Unfortunate stuff for James, and now he might even get ganked here. Although MTRX is going the opposite way, James is using Shadow Blade. That's about to come offline. Uh, rather, about to duration is about to expire, I should say. Anyway. Pretty interesting game, back and forth. Only a 4,000 net worth advantage for high ground, and even that was more before they killed, uh, before DDZ died, so. But still very, I think, solid game all around for high ground. They're getting the towers they need to get. There's one tier two tower left, which has already taken a lot of damage, about half of its HP. So that, that'll be cleared up pretty quickly, and they can push into high ground if they want to. However, by the time they decide to go for it, Aegis will be gone. It's expiring pretty soon, but here's the thing. There's gonna be a full Scotty up here momentarily for this Luna. And there it is. So 23 armor. Uh-oh, fight breaking out. They're going to get Mosin very quickly. And the gem popped up too. Felix get an Omni Slash. He'll force himself away and only die because there's not much you can do there. Can you well gets his blink canceled. Here comes the Luna. Winter G's like, dear God, she's got a freaking Scotty. They're running in. They're trying to find this gem. I think, I don't know what happened there. Requiem comes out. Meanwhile, the Eels will come through as Shadowfin getting caught. LSA is there as well. MTRX just trying to fight this. The Eclipse is coming out. Lance is doing it all on his own right now. The Guardian Angel will be there. DDZ trying to find somebody. Shrinal Cup, Kim, you all blinks out in time. They might make it away. Remember, Jeez. BYB is the one who has this gem. I cannot believe that did go better for high that ground. That crazy. That was uh, very risky stuff. They've done a great job of fighting around this Aegis uh, on the Radiant side. Like, they've been taking these engagements where they just kill two supports when Luna's not there. And then Luna shows up, and yeah, they all dive a little crazy to make sure they get the gem, but they all go to alive, so... Dude, there's like a uh, line of these people. Very worth it. Well, right, get the gem! Get it! <laughs> just running to get the gem is pretty great. Oh, Tower Deny. I believe in you, Felix! Right now. Oh! <laughs> just... Uh, well, that was pretty good from Kimo. Spell is still on his corrosive haze. He'll go for the TP and be successful. Purification almost kills him, but if they have the loon up there, that's a kill. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And that'll be that. All right. I've been looking up Lena builds to see if I'm crazy or not. That's why I've been quiet. I'm, uh, I'm curious. I'm looking through all of DPL right now because that's like the only like you know top teams that are playing right now. I am not seeing very many 30 second respawn timers, guys. James just knows. I'm this really game. surprised. Man, if they had a gym here, it'd be perfect. They would see him and he would die. But uh, James well, understands sure the push is coming. Uh oh, damn. He might still die here. Mosin has yeah, golem. Yeah, he's a lot of mobility. Yeah, he's pretty speedy. Very good stuff. But the amount of damage DDZ there did there just based off the Shadow Blade uh, break. Or not, well, not even break, it's not a Silver Edge, but just coming out of Shadow Blade damage was pretty nifty. He does a lot of damage. 
But so too does Lance, and he's taking the tower down and doing it pretty quickly. So that's the tier two tower taken care of. I don't know what Kimmy doing in the jungle. He's just sitting up there for now. But remember when they saved that tower, guys? I do. I was there. It was amazing. It was pretty great. <laughs> All right, so uh, no Aegis then. Now that they finally made their way to high ground, but feeling pretty good about the situation. This yeah, is where, again, so. this lean is supposed to pay off the wave clear. GA is back up in 39 seconds, so I don't think you commit to anything here if you're high ground. They might have to, though, anyways. LSA comes out. There's the Purification Repel to come through. Oh, that's why it doesn't need to be KB this game. I have Repel. I had completely forgotten. Yeah, Meanwhile, a little dicey, Mighty honestly. Savior Bottom Lane is taking the Tier 3 Tower and is now working on Rax. And so. we talked about this. They still only have Warlock to cancel him. Golem will come out, but again, while this is all happening, your Mailerax is dying. DDZ right, does get a double kill, a which, is, which is great, but yeah. Ooh, good glyph. Felix will come in. He has uh, no tell. He just used it. Mighty is trying to get this blade through. He comes out. He will get the Mailerax spin TP, and uh, they have no way of canceling this. They've already used Golem. And so and they're they TPing out and not top? getting Rax or even the Tier 3 tower. Wow. Oh, that, is, that is what happens when you lose your Tier 2 too early, and then your Tier 3... Uh, is so low in HP, and you just aren't ready for that push to come out from the Juggernaut. But I, I'm going to be honest, I think that's pretty game-saving, Trent. I mean, I, the game is not nope. going that poorly for Exploration, but it is pretty game-saving one way or the other. Oh, 100%. I mean, that's and non-stop if we find DDZ, it's even better. Ooh, Man's Dodge not there because Kimmy Laws is getting crushed. Uh, they will throw out the Cross Phase to get Vision as well as the Laguna Blade for James and secure the kill. So not only do they get the racks down bottom, they get a 67-second respawn time for the Shadow Fiend as well. Meanwhile... They did get the tier three tower. The golem got it. Lift right. mid. Oh, Omni slash nice coming out. Blade Fury is there. Oh, but Mighty Savior still can't get anything done with this. The Scotty slow is huge. Can they finally chase him down the upheaval? The oh, LSA tried so to get his retreat. It was very close. They blink and Felix looking for another fade bolt. Telekinesis is still on cooldown for five seconds though. Man, 22 second uh, cooldown on Telekinesis seems like it's really been, I mean, Felix has played so well this game. If only he had shorter cooldowns on his Telekinesis would be huge. But uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Yeah. Next talent? <laughs> well, he, he does have 20% cooldown reduction on level 25, but he's never yeah, getting there. Good. I actually had someone pick the the 400 land distance one, like the, the game. That's not bad, actually. Like, you can pull him way far back. Surprised. Look how far back he can pull him already as the Lena dies to it. But yeah. uh, BYB running in. Again, has borrowed time. He has his pipe as well. Might have to use both of them. Uh, borrowed time has not been used yet. The upheaval is there. BYB is like, I'm probably dead. There's my borrowed time. They're not going to attack me anymore. The AP will continue to go, and I'll get slowed up for in a year and a half. And now it's gone. And uh, he is at least at a solar crest, so he's actually not hitting that much. Man, this is a lot of work they're putting into BYB right now. The Mailer Rex will finally be taking the Shrine as if they actually can't even get the kill. And nor can they get the, the Range Rex either. Felix is going to try to get out of his blink in one. They're going to turn it around. Eclipse is there. BYB. I don't know that about that, my cocky. friend. Good Glimmer Cape, but still not enough. Laguna Blade comes out, but is on Mosin, who's at full HP. And that is a dead James. Good Freezy Field from Winter G. Actually, it's Felix. It's just kidding. He stole it. Nice. That's pretty awesome. I feel like he's just trying to prove that this was the uh, the right talent choice because yes. he's died a lot. He's making some good uh, <laughs> that, That's literally good choices. It's the only reason he's dying because he's got the talent. He's like, guys, listen. I don't know, man. I, don't, I think he could have he lived in a lot of these engagements. I just think they don't have... We talked about Initiation Man and, like, I feel like there's just too much sustain for high ground. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think the initiation matters. I think the sustain is really, really good for high ground. Oh, yeah. I mean, they needed to get ahead in the early game here to make this draft work, and they definitely did. Jumping in, Mighty Savior Blade Free is up. There's the Golem to cover the retreat of Felix. The Guardian Angel will come out as well. Kimmy will BKB. Slytherin Crush hits on nobody. Felix is getting a little low. The upheaval to cover the retreat again. Winter G trying to do what he can. The Greaves will come out along with the Shrine, but it, it is, again, just too much sustain. BYB TP's in. Requiem comes out. It is back to protected for a moment there as the creep wave now finally comes in. BYB's borrowed time is done. Jump in, crush onto two, and the force away coming out, just trying to stay alive, and he will do so. Blade Fury again for Mighty Savior, but the Scotty Slow is there, and boy, do they control him pretty damn well. Freezing Field from Energy with the Glimmer Cape up. They don't have detection. The races are there. Now they jump in. Spell Stolen Felix has got another one, but he might die for it, as he will go down to James. However, the four axe has been completed, and they take down four heroes as James is next, and uh, they still seem pretty fighting fit here, Train. So I think this is going to be game one going to high ground, I would imagine. Uh, it certainly looks that way. Mm -hmm. so, very well executed. Good uh, Omni Knight pick here. Not uh, not a guy we see too often these days, but always one to be feared. Not quite able to get the ball rolling here on the Radiant side. And it, uh, it was definitely Snowball Dota. 
Great Luna pick again. I think it was very smart to help deal with that Abaddon in the early game. This guy's usually more of a problem than this, but uh, they really shut him down. Yeah, they did. Those early kills, him not really getting any farm. The landing matchup just wasn't there. They're going to try to fight to the bitter end, but uh, it looks as if the throne will die momentarily. Good game. Game number one now coming out as high ground will take the victory. It is a best of three series. Um, and as you mentioned, some good stuff coming out from the, the Luna. Very good Scotty pickup, I got to say. I was a big fan of it this game, Trent, and uh, it worked out pretty well. And not just the Scotty, but all of the itemization really coming out for, for high ground. I can't think of one item that was like really just awful, an awful choice. No, no, it was very good. Um, maximum use of the Omni Knight, putting your faith in him, not needing those BKBs. Uh, I feel like Excursion were on the cusp of bringing that one back a couple times. Like getting those bigger items, like the, the BKB for the Slider, almost able to make those big plays. Uh, the Jug, of course, with the split push and getting that melee rack. So we'll have to see Dude. if uh, if they can bring it out in game two. Look at, I, love the, I love the differences between, if you look at high grounds, damage and healing, you have like one really good hero in heal, one really good hero in damage, and then Rubik's like, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> and then another healer, and then another damage dealer. Like, and also important to note is that Moe's had actually healed more than Omni Knight. I don't know if that's a common thing, but it seems it's still pretty impressive. Yeah, like. I think so. It is. I think it is because first of all, you really shouldn't be alive that much. You you should not be within one level of this Omni Knight when he has a Midas and you're a Warlock support. So Moe's is having a pretty impressive game. It's one of those games where you don't really notice Definitely. until the the end of the game, but. I think it's pretty he, he lived through all of those mid-game fights, and he was just spamming his heel nonstop. So yeah. he, he did so much work that 15 game. 15 assists, only three deaths, the same as the Omni Knights. So very good first game for everybody from high ground. With that, we will take a quick break. We'll jump into game number two when it's ready. It should be hosted right now. Make sure you guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment.